Well, good morning. I want to say a virtual hello to the people of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Milwaukee. My name is Jim Honig. I'm pastor here at Shepherd of the Bay Lutheran Church in Ellison Bay. And I am so thrilled to be with you this morning. I know that in years gone past, uh, we have had a relationship, Shepherd of the Bay, with St. Paul's. And over the past few years, that relationship has virtually dissolved. But I want to give a shout out and a thank you to your pastor, Pastor Delaney, who contacted me very early in her tenure at St. Paul's and asked about if there was a way that we could renew this relationship. And so here's a first step in um, putting that relationship back together. And I am so thrilled to be with you this morning and so thrilled to have Pastor Delaney preaching to the members of Shepherd of the Bay. Last October, my wife and I got in the car and took the long trip to eastern Nebraska to be with my sisters and their families and our extended family to lay to rest my mother. Eight years earlier, in the same month, we had had a similar gathering for my dad. One of the strange feelings that I experienced at that gathering with my family was this sense of being cut off from living elders. My three sisters are younger. I'm the oldest of four children. So now, instead of looking to my parents and their generation as the elders in the family, suddenly, I'm the elder. Now, I wouldn't say exactly that I feel like an orphan. I'm not literally an orphan, and so I really don't know what that feels like. But it does feel a little bit like being cut off from the relationships that have been important to me and relationships that have helped form the person that I have come to be. In today's gospel lesson, it was that phrase about being orphaned that really caught my attention. As Jesus prepares his friends for his departure, he tells them, I will not leave you orphaned. I think the reason that line caught my attention is that this time of pandemic is giving us sort of that sense of being orphaned, of, of being cut off. We're cut off from the normal kind of interaction with our family and friends. We're cut off from so many of our daily routines as we establish new routines that often, quite frankly, are lonely. We're cut off from simple pleasures like going down to the corner coffee shop. We're cut off from being able to travel and shop and go out for dinner and, and even go to church. I will not leave you orphaned. It's Monday, Thursday, in that upper room gathering with Jesus. It's the gathering we usually call the Last Supper. Jesus has just finished washing his disciples' feet. And now there's this long dialogue that Jesus engages with his disciples as he tries to prepare them for the challenging events that are going to happen in the next few days. And in light of his going away, he promises them another advocate. Well, I want to say two things about that. First, what is this advocate Sometimes, if you recall reading this passage from the King James translation, you may have heard this verse translated that I'm going to bring you the paraclete or leave you with the paraclete, which is an even stranger word than advocate. And whether you want to call it advocate or paraclete or something else, here's the sense of what Jesus is getting at. A paraclete or an advocate is one who is called alongside you, a companion, someone to speak for you, an intercessor. If you're going in for a chemo treatment and you want someone there to hold your hand, that's your paraclete. If you're going to immigration court and your English is not so great and you don't understand the law very well, the attorney who volunteers to go with you and speak for you is your paraclete. If you're going to see a doctor for a second opinion and you don't understand medical terminology very well and you're one of those people who gets anxious going to the doctor's office anyway, your next door neighbor who is a nurse volunteers to go with you 
She's your paraclete. And Jesus is promising to his followers just that kind of presence that he will always be walking along beside them. So that's one thing. Here's the other. Jesus promises another paraclete. Did you notice that? Did you hear it? So who's that first paraclete? Well, of course, it's Jesus, Jesus himself. His whole ministry has been to accompany his disciples as they learn the ways of this new kingdom of love and grace. Now, Jesus is about to head to the cross, and there he will accomplish all the things that his mission has required. And so he promises them another paraclete, another one, who will walk alongside them, be their companion, and be their intercessor. And that, dear church, is the Spirit. The Spirit, that quiet member of the Trinity, who, according to the Apostle Paul, lives in us. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? The Spirit is the one who brings our needs to the Father, even when we don't know what to pray for ourselves. And that Spirit... That's the one I'm convinced in these difficult and challenging times does not leave us orphaned, but promises to be the presence of God for us, up close, personal. And you know that spirit. That spirit came to you at your baptism. That spirit abides in you as Jesus abides in the Father. That God with you spirit knows exactly what you need and is God up close, personal, right beside you who is bringing it to you. This spirit, when you are at the edge of a despair, brings a word of hope. When you lose your way, this spirit brings a word of correction. When you're losing your confidence and your calling as as a child of God, this spirit brings you a word of strength and encouragement. A couple of weeks ago, one of our staff members was going through a rough spot particularly difficult and challenging week, and and we had talked through some of those challenges in our staff meeting. And when this staff person showed up on that Thursday for our taping of the Sunday morning service, I could tell that she was not well. I know I had other appointments right after the taping, so I didn't get to talk to her except in passing. Well, a few days later, we talked. And she said, Pastor, there were two things in your sermon that I needed and that I have remembered. And then she proceeded to rattle off two sentences from my sermon that, frankly, I would have had a hard time remembering were there. They were not at all what I would describe as the main points of the sermon. They were things that I said almost in passing. And I want to tell you that that was not me. That was the Spirit. The Spirit knew what she needed to hear. The Spirit brought to her a word from God. And it was more than just a word from God. It was an actual transformative presence of God that brought a change to her heart and mind and an assurance that one has come up alongside her and promised to walk beside her even in the hard and challenging times. And so my hope and prayer, no, it's more than that. My deep confidence is that in these challenging times when we are all orphaned from what we might call normal life, orphaned from the usual ways that we interact with family and friends, and orphaned from our routines, and orphaned from so many things that have given our lives meaning, that the Spirit is indeed walking alongside you, giving you exactly the word of hope and encouragement that you need for this day, for this week, and for this precious and holy life of yours. Amen.